So I recorded 30 minutes of video with my mic muted. So if I sound defeated, that's why. So here I am on a rally machine, but you can follow along with this on most distributions. It comes default. Nothing changes with bash scripting, whether you're on Linux, uh, SUSE, Ubuntu, RHEL, Fedora, CentOS, whatever distro you're on. And the Xenity comes default on most distributions, right? So pop-up boxes, right? I just had one pop up when I opened the terminal and that's the end goal, right? We want a pop-up box to pop up when something happens, when a service stops, when a user logs in, maybe we want to make uh, an application that involves a pop-up box that we put here and users can click on, right? So I'll click okay there and that'll go away. So for Xenity, right, if you do a Xenity dash dash version, you can find out, or if it's installed on your system where you can man Xenity, right? Um, but you can do ad hoc commands and, and this is how I'll introduce this to you, right? So if you do a dash dash help, you get all these uh, options, right? And it's pretty in depth, but the goal is after this video that you kind of have an idea of how to navigate these options, right? So we have info here, right? That's one of our options. So if I do a Xenity dash dash info, I'll get an informational pop-up box when I run this command and I'll give it some text. Uh, and now that will equal, hi, I'm a computer, right? And there I have a pop-up box, hi, I'm a computer. But again, that's not useful. We want to include this in a script so it pops off when something happens. If some, you know, if we put it in an Etsy profile, profile D, depending on your distro, this script will run and they'll get a pop-up box when they log in, right? So for that, I'm gonna make a welcome.show and we're gonna start a fresh bash script here. Bin slash whoop, bash. And you always want to comment, like, what's the script for, right? Xenity pop book box script. So that same line we entered earlier, Xenity dash dash info, we'll give it a title this time. So you can do a dash dash title to give a box a title. And that's that bar at the top of the window. Uh, welcome. All right, and then We'll give a we'll give a text here. Text equals uh, my host name is. Now you can type host name, the host name of your computer, right? But it, ideally you want scripts to be dynamic, so you would do dollar sign host name, which is the environment variable set on every Linux machine for the host name. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this, right? And then if I go ahead and, oh, you know, you always want your scripts to be executable, right? So I got chmod welcome.shell to be executable here. And you can see it's executable now. So now if I run welcome.shell, hi, my host name is local.host local domain because that is the environment variable if I echo hostname here set for the hostname of the computer and because it's a bash script it picks it can pick up environment variables like that so that works fine when we want an information box right so we put the script somewhere or we assign it uh, you know, to another script that when something happens, run this script, right? And they get an information box. But what if we want an interactive box? Maybe we want a question box, like yes or no. So we'll do Xenity dash dash question. This will give us the question box, yes or no. We'll do a dash dash text equals. And let's say we wanted to create a script that told users what software is installed on this system. Would you like to view, uh, I spell it like wrong, to view the software installed on this host, All right? Uh, so now if I save this script and I run it again, I get a question box. Would you like to view the software installed on this host? Yes or no? It doesn't matter what I click right now. I'm not going to get a result whether I click yes or no because we haven't defined 
what yes or no is going to be. And by the way, if, if you noticed when I ran this, um, this part was a little like, this didn't look text friendly, right? Um, you can edit the width and the height um, of the pop-up boxes. So if you do a dash dash width equals, uh, we'll do 300, and this is in pixels, and height equals 300 as well. I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and we run it again, right? Oh, I guess it didn't like, did I spell something wrong? I did, I spelled width wrong. Width. So we'll run it again, and now the box is bigger, and the text doesn't look all smashed up like a bag of smashed ass. Vi welcome dot shell. So we need a conditional. What happens if we hit no? What happens if we hit yes? And for the purposes of this video, I am not going to do an, a, an if and an else before the no. I'm only going to put an option for the yes because we you you get this is just to help you get the gist of, of it, right? So conditional if uh, and we'll do dollar sign question mark, which takes the uh, exit status of the last command executed, which is either a one or a zero. Uh, and so it's going to be a zero for yes. And then, then, so if the exit status is yes, then uh, we're going to, we're going to have the script do Zenity again. Um, but this time we're going to do a list, right? And the list is going to let us have columns uh, and different rows. And then we can define those columns as well. Um, and you can do this all in one uh, one row here. Like you can do dash dash list, dash dash title, enter your title. I prefer to separate the lines when I'm doing conditionals because it just makes it neater, right? So if I do a dash dash title here equals installed software, and that's gonna give uh, this little pop-up box a title. Uh, new line, I'm gonna do column uh, software. Right, uh, and we'll do, oh, I'm doing this wrong, software. Uh, and we'll, we'll do a second column here. Uh, so we'll do this the software and then the version of the software installed, version, All right? And to give you an idea of how the columns work in Zenity, um, again, I can do this in one, all in one line. So if I did git, if I type git, that's gonna go in the first column, and then whatever's next is version five, right? It's gonna go in the second column. Xanity, that, that'll go in the first column, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'm gonna create a new line again, just for neatness. Uh, we'll say we have Git installed on the system, and we'll say the version is 1.1, right? And then we'll end this script and we'll go ahead and run it. Hi, my host name. Would you like to be the software installed? Yes. And here's my two columns software and version. Git 1.1. So that's all fine and dandy, right? Uh, if I put more software under here, like the Zenity uh, 2.1, right? Quotation mark, save that, run it. Yes, uh, it did not show up. Why didn't it show up? Because I did not start a new line there. And now we have a second row here, but again, our two columns software and version. So that's, that works fine until you go ahead and you update the version of your software and now nothing matches. So you have to update the script and push it back out. No bueno, right? You wanna make things as dynamic as possible, right? Just like we did here, we have a host name variable. But by default, we don't have uh, a git version variable and a Zenity version variable defined in our environment. Uh, and I don't have git in installed and I messed up Zenity so I'm not going to do that either. But I do have Python 3 installed, right? So if you want to make this dynamic, 
Um, so if I open a new tab here, right? Uh, Python 3 dash dash version. Of course, that's not a real command because I spelled it wrong. This gives me an output of Python 3.6.8, right? So if I want to display that here, I'll display it as one column just for the sake of ease and time. Um, we're going to define a variable here. We'll call it variable p3 for Python 3, right? And then up here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, in our script, we're going to define p3 equals uh, dollar sign and then Python 3 dash dash version. So what the, we're going to assign the variable p3, whatever the standard out of this command is. So when the script runs, it's going to run this command and assign the whatever gets output, which is going to be this as the variable. And then down here, we define the variable. And that's what's going to get put in our software column. So if I go ahead and run it again, do you want to be the software? Yes. I get dynamically so the up the version of python 3 so if i do an update on the system and the version of python 3 gets updated every time the script runs it's going to pull the version that's installed and that's how you keep it dynamic now this is just an example right if you wanted say uh gnome dash dash version right that's not a thing that's not a real command so you're going to have to find out for everything you want to get a version of, right? You can do an RPM-QA, you can grep gnome, gnome, right? Um, and that'll, so say you just wanted to list a certain version of an RPM installed. So gnome calculator, right? Then you would define your variable for gnome calculator as rpm you know this right so like if i go here if i go into the welcome shell script right and i let's make a variable we'll call it calc equals again dollar sign but then that command uh, copy paste because that's what I need to do to get the version, uh, you know, the RPM version installed for Cal. Um, let's define this as, uh, da, 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 da. let's do a new line. And then we say Cal. And now we know what version of GNOME Calculator via the RPM output is installed. So if you want to customize, if you want to use this example on your system, you're more than welcome to. Just be aware that uh, you know you kind of got a little, you got to get a little creative with it. <laughs> but that's how you make a dynamic Bash script that's going to give you an interactive pop-up box. And this was just one example that's. Uh, hopefully going to get you used to how to use Zenity uh, and Zenity in a bash script. And then you can use a Zenity dash dash help command to kind of figure things out from there. If you're like, how do I make a calendar box that people interact with or progress bar? You know, you, you, you can figure that out. Um, and then I think in the next video, I'll go over how to put that script we made, the list software over here um, on the desktop as like a, an icon people can click on. So if we don't want to annoy them, what, you know, when they log in with a pop-up box, we can say, hey, if, if you want to know where this information is, um, you can click on this and it'll, it'll tell you. Or if you want to do something, write a program that does something, you can put it in there. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next video.